Good morning. My name is Jack Barrett. I'm Senior Director for Juniper Networks. And today I'll be presenting on organizational transformation in the service provider environment. I'm very excited to be here today. And I think I have a very uh, interesting topic to talk about. The challenges that face uh, service providers today are very well known, whether it be revenue growth, many that we just talked about. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not going to talk about those specific challenges. Uh, I want to talk about something much more fundamental uh, and some of the questions that were addressed in the survey itself. The question we like to ask is, are carriers truly ready and able to do something different in this environment than they've been uh, doing for a very long time? Um, do they have the right skills? Do they have the right processes um, and the right culture to be successful? Uh, we believe uh, the majority of service providers will make it through this transition, uh, but what we'd like to do today is provide some practical guidance for you as te business and technology leaders to help uh, you take to your organization to help you smooth and accelerate your transformation in this uh, new world here. So with that, uh, let us begin. As uh, technology companies, we typically start right here, and that's around the network platform. And specifically, what are the benefits enabled by SCN and NFE? And that's a very reasonable place to start because these technologies have some fairly far-reaching implications. In fact, we believe they have, sorry, down button. Uh, in fact, we uh, believe they have the ability to truly change the economics of the network in a number of ways. Um, basically, they provide two fundamental capabilities, and Neil talked about this in, in a sense in terms of the, the complementary nature of these technologies. One without the other doesn't give you the full benefit here. The first is around service agility. I think Neil referred to this as uh, service responsiveness. Uh, and that allows carriers to be more competitive by bringing new services to market more quickly, try and buy type uh, capabilities. And this is enabled through dynamic uh, capacity, faster customer turn up, uh, and rolling out of new services uh, to market more quickly. The other area is around operational efficiencies, where we believe there'll be some benefits. And this is gained through process simplification, leverage of common off-the-shelf hardware, uh, like the use of x86 servers and resource pooling, which was mentioned earlier, as well as network programmability. And this is optimizing the actual network for the application itself. Uh, what happens is the underlying network becomes abstracted, and a lot of these processes are now being controlled by software. So this creates more of a software-like service delivery model which I really believe needs to reset uh, the strategy, go to market strategy going forward for carriers. So as I said, uh, to realize a greater opportunity, we need to take this more holistic approach. You know, we, we talk about the uh, network platform that I just spoke about, but we also need to discuss the new business models, right? Uh, many of the things about uh, utility-based billing, cloud-based services, two-sided business models. You know, these are the new types of service models but these will have implications on go-to-market in terms of your sales teams, your supplier relationships, and other assets, and billing uh, capabilities. With the uh, benefits of the top-line benefits for new service uh, business models, the bottom-line benefits enabled through the network platform, there's an opportunity now to transform the economics. And what you're looking for here is a growth in profitability, a growth in revenue, and a growth in shareholder value, whether it's publicly or privately held uh, companies. The challenge with any kind of financial metrics is they tend to be lagging indicators. You really don't know that you've achieved these objectives until the period has closed, the books have closed, and all the numbers have been added up. So the question is, how do you know you're on the right path uh, to achieve these benefits? The way we like to look at it is uh, through what we call the empowered organization. And we believe that's the best way to pull together the strategy in a very cohesive and holistic way. And that's what I'll focus on uh, throughout the rest of this presentation. So this means transformation in several key ways. Uh, transformation from a leadership perspective in terms of the responsibilities and accountabilities of leadership. Uh, transformation from a cultural perspective in terms of the behaviors that are needed for success, and transformation of capabilities in terms of the skill sets and the business processes that must be in place uh, for execution. You know, starting at the top, we always believe that change uh, starts with leadership. Uh, here are three roles that we currently see evolving, the CTO, the CIO, and the CMO. Uh, today, the CTO has responsibility for building and operating the network. 
The CIO has many responsibilities, very broad areas uh, from application development to security to policy to internal controls to ensure that policy is uh, being enforced. And a CMO has responsibility for customer requirements as well as sort of to go to market and brand capabilities. We see these roles evolving in a number of ways in terms of their focus and in terms of the level of collaboration uh, that must exist between them. I keep hitting the wrong button. Here we go. Uh, for the CTO, we see them becoming more future focused, uh, creating the technology strategy or the network strategy, I think that it's, uh, was referred to, establishing future standards both internally and externally, and a migration of the legacy systems um, over time and probably somewhat of a de-emphasis on the overall operational uh, infrastructure. The CIO, and now we see them becoming much more operations focused. As cloud-based services become more prevalent in the marketplace, this, these applications have to be built with an operational mindset and an operational readiness in mind. Um, this is a, a related to developing software architectures uh, that have high availability, right? You don't want the software to fail streamlining service delivery, de delivery through a DevOps type of uh, methodologies and ensuring security and compliance. Um, that last point, I think, is absolutely critical for both the carrier and for the customers. You know, uh, Target is a, a well-known example. Um, pending the breach of their credit cards, uh, it was the CIO who had to resign, but more importantly, there was a 46% drop in profitability following that, that break-in. It's a very, very important area of focus, uh, in our opinion. And the CMO, uh, perhaps the CMO has the most dramatic transformation, in my opinion, and in Juniper's opinion, uh, is that they start to become more solutions focused. This means the marketing organization in general has to become much more uh, technical, right? So they can be engaged early in developing customer, uh, new customer solutions, defining the customer experience from an end-to-end -end basis, and evolving the brand from a, uh, car you know, from a solution or connectivity uh, offering to a more of a solutions-based offering, uh, which is uh, no small task. Now, uh, once you have the leadership in mind, now, now it's about extending the culture. And simply stated, culture, in one way to state uh, culture, is the way people be act, act and behave. And we look at these behaviors from two perspectives, an internal perspective and an external perspective. Internally, uh, carriers today are very much engineering focused, focused on reliability, scalability, network performance, and externally focused on connectivity type services, whether it be mobile services, IP services, uh, layer three VPN services, and, and so on. Now we uh, expect that these types of attributes be consistent with the future culture, but they need to be extended in, in a few ways here. Uh, one is uh, carriers need to become more comfortable with experimentation. One of the things here is viewing fast fail as a success, right? Going out and trying things and taking them down very quickly. Web companies are very adept at this. If you look at Amazon or Google, they've taken down more services in the last five years than they have out running today. Um, this will manifest itself externally as being more responsive to customers. This will enable, uh, be more responsive to customer needs and requests, which change rapidly in today's environment. Uh, they need to adopt a more software-centric mindset. And what this means is engaging in uh, agile and software development methodologies. Uh, this will uh, enable more of a solutions orientation and faster time to market for these new services and capabilities. The third uh, area is around collaboration. Uh, collaboration across the organization and, and the different organizational silos such that they can uh, basically deliver a seamless customer experience. Now what we're saying is that the service provider needs to maintain uh, the attributes they currently have and the brand that's currently out there, which I think is very powerful in terms of the trust, the relationship, and, and the reliability that they developed but they need to extend that with these new attributes and uh, create what we can consider to be the unique service provider culture. And in fact, by extension, that becomes a unique service provider brand, very different from web companies. So we're really trying to carve out a different space here uh, for our carrier customers. From a, a new capabilities perspective, we look at these in two areas. One is uh, skill sets and business processes. 
Uh, with respect to skill sets, uh, a lot of this evolves in, related to software skills, SDN engineering, cloud orchestration, and agile methodologies. And the last uh, one here is around business development. And, and the, the reason for this type of skill set is many new services will be offered through partners such as Amazon, uh, Microsoft, through APIs. And that's a business development and capability that's needed to uh, help build out these relationships in these hybrid cloud uh, type environments. From a process perspective, there are actually three, three areas here. Uh, one is, is DevOps style um, innovate for in to accelerate innovation. And we say DevOps style because I think it needs to be uh, slightly different. It needs to include customers and it needs to include suppliers in that methodology to get new services and solutions out to market uh, much more quickly. For your traditional, what I call, quote to cash type processes, this is your uh, fulfillment, your service assurance, your billing, uh, there's a couple of approaches. Um, every company has some form of those processes. They're all slightly different. So what our recommendation here is to start by looking at some type of value stream mapping uh, technique uh, that allows you to assess uh, ways of improving the value that you bring to your customers through these technologies. As you uh, learn more, you may want to think through a business uh, re-engineering approach, which is a much more holistic and radical uh, transformation of the business processes. And the last is a cooperative uh, supplier orientation. <laughs> uh, and this, uh, I think, gets to the last question that was asked um, about looking at partner, at looking at your suppliers, not as suppliers, but as business partners, right? You know, so we look at ways to engage in the success of our, our customers and, and, you know, be a partner in that, in that shared service. So, um, so the way we look at this is, you know, uh, it starts with leadership, not just at the top, but in all, um, you know, at all levels. We look at the, um, the cultures that need to be instilled and that instill the behaviors for success and enablement of the skills and processes. And that's what we really uh, consider the, the empowered organization here. So let me leave you with a couple of quick actions here. Um, some of these are fairly straightforward. Um, but the first thing we recommend is to start, if you're not already down this road, is start to gain experience with these technologies. Introduce SEN, NFE technologies to your network um, and, and start in, in, in your labs and start playing with the technologies and starting to learn. Um, start to build bridges, start to break down the organizational silos and barriers. At, at Juniper, we call these pods. We, we, we take a group of people together from different organizations, start a project, and if it, it starts to land and, and grow on its own, then you know, we start to expand it. But the idea is to start to work across uh, organizations. The third is to grow your capabilities. Start to try some of these new methodologies, uh, especially around Agile and DevOps type methodologies. Uh, on these projects. Bring these into your, your company so you can start to learn how these work and adopt them uh, to your um, you know, business needs. You know, start to experiment, right? I think this is critical. Go out to the market, pick some low risk offerings, um, take a friendly customer or a market trial or a proof of concept. And I've seen uh, several uh, carriers today starting down this path. Uh, the fifth, Start to embrace and leverage your partners. Bring them in as business partners and not just as suppliers or vendors like Juniper, um, but other companies you potentially might be in competition with. Start to partnering with them to bring more value and relevance to your customers. And the fifth year is around extending the culture. Uh, and this may be the most difficult, and here's where you may need to engage your uh, human resources organization but start to embrace these new behaviors um, that are increasingly needed for success in this new Agile environment. Uh, so with that, you know, Juniper is very much interested in your success, and uh, we are here and ready to help you uh, down this path as you go through this transformation. So thank you very much.